Hello, this is a Hebrew video on Psalm 8, 3 and 4. So, this is the part of Psalm 8 that is quoted in the New Testament. Uh, and so, it is the part that is um, very interesting to me as more of a New Testament than Old Testament person. Let's look into it. So, Ki er e shemeka ma'ase ez ba'oteka yareach ve kokavim. All right. Um, so, ki is usually translated for, uh, although um, most translations do uh, when uh, here for the translation. I, I'm not sure why. I, I'm not used to ki being translated when, but I assume that it is a possible sense of what's going on here. Uh, when I see, when I look at the skies, is the way it's often translated. Um, er e. So this is from ra'a to see. E is a first person singular, first common singular imperfect um, performative on the front here. So I see, when I see. Shemeka. So um, shemayim is the word here, uh, heaven or skies. Skies is a better translation of what they were thinking. The yod is what's indicating the plural here. And then ka is a second masculine singular possessive pronoun, your skies. When I see your skies. And of course, the psalmist is talking to uh, to the Lord here. When I see your skies, ma'ase ez ba'oteka, the works of your hands, the works of your fingers. So ma'ase, um, uh, this sereyod is a masculine plural construct. So it's... Um, something masculine, plural, of. And asa, of course, means to do or to make. So a ma'ase uh, ma is the works of, the, the, the things made of your fingers, that are by your fingers in this case. So the mem is often used to make a, uh, a verb into a noun or a participle. The doings of your fingers, something like that. But it is masculine, plural, construct which is where the of comes from. So when I see your skies, O Lord, when I see the doings of your fingers, um, finger is a, um, a four consonant word. Uh, so this um, esba uh, here is the finger. And then um, the, the yod again is, is where the plural comes from. And then ka is second masculine uh, singular possessive, your fingers. Uh, when I see your skies, the works of your fingers, um, yareach, the, the moon, the kokavim, and the, the, the stars, uh, hirik yod mem is masculine plural absolute. So seriod is masculine plural construct, and you stick an of on the end. Hirik yod mem is an absolute. Um, um, so the stars, kokavim, I always think it sounds like a chicken dish. Um, anyway, not important right now. All right, when I see the skies, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars, asher, uh, uh, konan, uh, konanta, uh, that you made, that you established. All right, so um, asher is the relative pronoun, uh, that, and then uh, you established the, uh, the tav uh, kamats is the second masculine sural, uh, singular of the verb here. The 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 um, the kamatz hey the hey is is really not necessary, uh, so uh, I'm not sure that it it has any particular meaning to it. Um, you'll notice the extra nun uh, because uh, I believe kun is the the base form of it. But it, it it I suspect I didn't look this up. I suspect it's a geminate. Um, and that in its base form, it loses the second nun. Why double the nun? You know, why use two nuns when one will do? Um, so in this particular form, uh, it looks like the nun, the, the return of the nun, uh, the return of the nun. It's a movie. Uh, it's a Catholic show. Anyway, so that you established. Uh, this is all, even though it's one verse, verse three, uh, it's really not, um, well, in most English translations, it's not a sentence. It could be a sentence if you take this as for instead of when. For I see your skies, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you established. And then this leads to the question. Ma 
anosh. What is a human? Uh, what is a man? Um, and I assume women are included in this as well. Um, although the word um, uh, is, uh, it's a masculine word. Uh, and uh, of course, the plural, um, I think, uh, anoshot, I'm trying to remember the plural for women might be uh, put an oat on the end of this. I don't remember. But uh, certainly uh, the psalmist is thinking of more than just guys. What is a human? Uh, ki uh, tis karenu, that you remember him. Um, him, of course, is referring back to the human. Uh, uh, it's it's difficult, uh, not too difficult, but it's a little bit difficult to to make this inclusive in its language. Um, but it is not just thinking of, of guys. It also includes women. What is a, a human that you remember them? Um, the tav is the second masculine singular perfect. And then the nu, the nun here, I don't know whether that's a nun energicum, nun paragogicum. They come up with a word for it. But the, the shuruk at the end is the him. And the nun is for fun, <laughs> for help, a little help. Um, so uh, that, that you remember him. I, I must confess, I've never fully um, figured out why Hebrew sometimes uses one word one word for him and sometimes another word for him. Even in these two verses, we've got uh, the U uh, for him here, but we're going to get a different one later on. But basically, we get the point here. I look at the skies, I look at the works of your fingers, I see the moon, I see the stars, the, these things that you have established, and I think, man... What what are we? We're insignificant. I'm a gnat. I'm less than a gnat next to a star. Uh, why do you even think about me? Why do you even care about me, God? What is a, a man that you remember? What is a human being that you even give us a second thought? What's up with that? Um, uh, uvein, uvein Adam, uh, ki, uh, tif, ke, uh, tif, kan, kif, <laughs> uh, tif, ke, De nu. Okay, so we've got two news here. Uh, or the son of a human, uh, that you visit him, Picard, to visit. Not Picard in, from Star Trek, but Picard. Uh, Ti is again, this Tav is the second masculine singular referring to God, that you visit, and then the U is the him. And the Nun is there for the ride. It's like, let's put a, let's put a little padding in here to make it uh, sound better. But the new uh, has no uh, a semantic uh, meaning to it. it. It has no meaning. All right. So let's 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 put it all together here. For I see the skies, the works of your fingers, the moon and stars that you established. What in the world is a human being that you remember or give any thought to to them? You know what is what is this, the the uh, the child of a human that you would visit? Then what's what's up with that? This is a great question. Uh, we like to think we're important, don't we, as human beings? We like to think, oh, I'm a human being. I'm pretty important. I mean, the vast scheme of things, not so much, really. I mean, when you think of the the even the Earth, if we if we could see the sky, the size of the Earth. I've not been to space. Um, you, you'll be surprised to know. Sometimes people think you're kind of spacey. You know, they think you must have been to space. But I haven't been to space. Believe it or not, even William Shatner has been to space. But what I hear is, um, no matter how much you prepare yourself, there is just no prep preparing yourself for the, the sense of what it's like to see the earth from space. And I, I kind of get that feeling when I read these, these two verses here. You know, we humans think we're so important. In the vast scheme of things, we're not. We're, we're nothing. The only reason that we're important is because God likes us. Because God thinks of us. Because God remembers us. And God visits us. It boggles the mind if we could truly understand it. Our, our meaning is derivative. We are meaningful because God loves us. Well, that's Psalm 8, 3 and 4.